Hello, friends, family, and common sensors. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today, we are going to uh, look over an article from True Crime Daily entitled Prosecutorial Misconduct Bungles Murder Case Against Suspected Shooter. And as you suspected, there's a little bit of our favorites uh, mixed in here, uh, a claim of sovereign citizenship, but there's also some very interesting legal issues tied up in here uh, that also go to the overall concept and idea of sovereign citizenship. And I'm going to tie everything together uh, at the end with a bow. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. If you like my content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show. It get, tells YouTube to give me higher rankings. It lets me know you're enjoying the show, and therefore it incentivizes me to make more videos. Also, down in the description below, I have a uh, a, a link so that you can sign up for my email list. Sign up for the email list. You get a free PDF on a history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement written by yours truly, Joe the Lawyer. Um, also, I will send you weekly emails with updates of all new videos, plus more PDFs, plus other content that I am coming out with daily. Uh, and if you don't like the email list, you can always unsubscribe. Give it a try. Now, before we begin, uh, please, uh, everybody, take a couple of seconds. Grab your favorite drink. Um, you may have it in a glass, a cup, a bottle, a can. I have mine in a glass uh, with a little Pepsi sign, but this is not Pepsi I'm drinking. This is Diet Pepsi. I like to switch it up from the Diet Coke to the Diet Pepsi. It's a little late at night. This won't keep me up like a cup of coffee would. My three three favorite beverages are water, Pepsi, and Diet diet soda and coffee for better or worse i love my caffeine that's probably my biggest vice the occasional cigar let's do our same time sip so this article is a little bit old it's from october 11th 2017 i just discovered this website true crime daily they run uh some pretty good stories on real crime that occurs I just searched uh, up here for search for Sovereign Citizen. This article came along and I was fascinated. The article's sort of long, okay, so I'm going to summarize it for you. Prosecutorial misconduct bungles murder case against suspected shooter. Here, uh, there's a video. The article's in the description. Uh, and the victim of this crime was an individual named Dimitri Hampton. He was 21 years old, apparently he wanted to join the Air Force, and uh, he w wanted to study criminal justice. What happens is one day he's at, he's at home um, with his family, I believe his sister, uh, and a couple other individuals in the house. I'm trying to see exactly where this is what city okay Flanders New York he's at home uh, his let's see let his sister her boyfriend and their daughter and then Dimitri's girlfriend so there's two adult women two adult males and a child in the house and what happens is um, I, I believe it's four men break into the house around 3 o'clock a.m. and they, they're brandishing guns. They bring everybody into the living room and they're looking for either drugs or lottery winnings because apparently Mr. Walker, there was accusations that he was a drug dealer. Um, he's the other male in the house besides Dimitri. Accusations that he was a drug dealer and that he won the lottery. So these guys on the street probably got word there may be drugs or uh, lottery winnings in the house. They break in at 3 a.m. They get everyone into the house. They get the male, the two females, and the young daughter into the living room, except for Dimitri. Dimitri begins to wrestle with, and he's 21 years old, he begins to wrestle with one of the men in the kitchen, bang, bang, shots are fired, Dimitri is shot, and he dies shortly thereafter. So the police conduct an investigation and um, by threatening charges, they get uh, this one individual, his name's Matthew Messiah Booker, apparently uh, his sister and a friend, 
and I don't, I may get some of the facts a little bit off here. You can read the article. I know you're going to kill me in the comments. That's fine. Bring it on. Here's what I'm telling you. The facts, the, the specific facts are not actually that important to the points that I'm going to make. So the police get two other individuals to cooperate with them to testify against this man, Matthew Messiah Booker. Um, the defense attorney for Matthew Messiah Booker is a former prosecutor. They're preparing to go to trial, okay? They want to nail this Booker um, for, the, for the death and shooting of Mr. Dimitri Johnson. Um, I'm sorry, Dimitri Hampton. And prior to trial, what this defense attorney discovers is, is stacks and stacks of documents, okay, that show that the police had investigated multiple other suspects in addition to this Matthew Messiah Booker, okay? However, they never revealed that to the defense, okay? So that basically breaks down their entire case. Uh, the, the, the defense attorney, Ahern, goes, takes the, the evidence that he discovers from the prosecution to the judge, tells him that he believes that this hiding of evidence was intentional. The prosecution's case essentially falls apart, okay? And they offer Mr. Matthew Messiah Booker a plea deal, and he pleads to a deal where he gets five years when he was facing a homicide charge instead uh instead he took a lesser charge and pled to a five-year guilty plea so in essence because the the prosecution had two witnesses a family member and a friend who were going to testify against mr booker okay say that it was him who robbed the house him that was the shooter all right, based on what they heard him say after and during the um, the robbery. But because the prosecution had conducted an investigation on multiple other suspects and never closed out those suspects and then never revealed that to the defense, okay, their case fell apart. They made Mr. Booker a plea deal for five years and Mr. Booker took it even though he could have gone to trial against the prosecution's case, which now would have been a wounded duck because of the other suspects that were investigated, never closed up, and their withdrawing of evidence. However, there was no guarantee that he still would have won despite those issues. So Mr. Booker made a rational decision to take the plea deal offered to him by prosecutors. So if you read this article, I'm going to start with the sovereign citizen stuff. If you read this article, Mr. Booker, throughout the trial, he's accused of homicide in this robbery, maintains that he is a sovereign citizen. There's a direct quote from his defense attorney, Brendan Ahern, who's a good attorney by all accounts, at least he was on this case. He has a philosophy that he is a sovereign citizen, that the American system of justice does not necessarily have jurisdiction over him. Uh, but Messiah's mantra falls on death ears. He and his alleged cohorts, fa cohorts face murder charges. Messiah is thought to be the actual shooter. And apparently throughout the, um, throughout the, the court proceedings, uh, th this individual maintains that he is a sovereign citizen and that the courts don't have, um, jurisdiction over him. I'm trying to find a quote down here. I believe there is one. So anyway, this individual claims sovereign citizenship, ends up putting in a plea, and then later on at his sentencing, he tries to withdraw the plea. I don't believe that it was ultimately successful, okay, but I, I imagine that he argued sovereign citizenship again. The point that I'm trying to make here, and I've talked about this before, is that this, this individual, Mr. Booker, and I don't know anything about him except what I read in this article, okay, uh, he maintains that he's a sovereign citizen throughout this case, and then he ends up essentially winning his case, okay, because of prosecutorial misconduct, not because he's a sovereign citizen. However, 
that victory reinforces likely this individual in this individual's mind that the sovereign citizen arguments work because now he says to himself i maintain my sovereign citizenship that's the real reason that i won the system is fake it's a conspiracy da 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 da, da. and instead of the fact that he won is there was an overzealous prosecutor who hid evidence from the defense attorney because he wanted to get the conviction so badly so it, 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 you know, ultimately that prosecutorial, prosecutorial misconduct does a lot of damage to everybody in the system overall, but it also reinforces this individual's sovereign citizenship ideas. And that, I believe, is something that goes on very common as I read in different chat rooms, watch videos on sovereign citizens. They win legal cases for reasons other than their sovereign citizenship, but then they believe that the reason they won was the sovereign citizenship. And when I read this article, I said, wow, this is something that I've seen. And it's one of the reasons the movement uh, lives on and one of the reasons that it stays strong. Now, what this prosecutor did is he withheld evidence that could have been possibly um, could have acquitted or shown that Messiah Booker was innocent. Okay. That is a, a, that's a violation, that's a constitutional violation of due process, okay, which falls under generally the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, which requires you to have due process of law. Due process basically means that, that, that when, especially in a criminal proceeding, the proceedings have to be fair. It's a fairness doctrine. And if the prosecution withholds evidence that could that could potentially exonerate you that's unfair that's a violation of your due process laws the seminal case was Brady v Maryland this prosecutor did exactly what happened in Brady and exactly what you're not supposed to do as a prosecutor and that is withhold exculpatory evidence from the defendant and the reason prosecutors do that is because they just want conviction sometimes just like there's a lot of really great cops out there okay and there are bad apples the same is true with prosecutors this prosecutor uh, he 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 didn't do his duty his duty is uh, prosecutors have special ethical duties um, and this individual violated them by withholding this exculpatory evidence and I'm just just to go a step farther because I'm a criminal defense attorney is there's there's a lot of good defense attorneys out there but there are some bad apples too who cross ethical lines so I don't want to I, I don't want to say all prosecutors are bad or all cops are bad or all defense attorneys are bad but this guy may Made a bad decision a really bad decision in this case okay it cost a possible conviction for the prosecution um, and obviously the victims the individual who died uh, were very sad with the result um, you know it, it, it sometimes it's better for all parties to go through a trial and then let the trial decide what actually was or did occur and then we have to live with that justice it's from a jury of our peers so I wanted to review this article it's old but I thought it was interesting and there were a couple of teachable moments in here one is that sometimes sovereign citizens win cases okay when they're claiming sovereign citizenship but it's not because they're sovereign citizens and it's not because of sovereign citizen arguments however if they win it it reinforces the sovereign citizen ideas number two uh, prosecutors have to turn over any evidence that may acquit the defendant in a criminal case here it was evidence of other suspects who were out there and they had, had never been closed on that's evidence the defendant could have used to defend himself in court that the police had multiple suspects he's just one of many that could create reasonable doubt okay when a, when a prosecutor withholds evidence that would tend to exonerate a defendant that's a violation of due process that the seminal case is called Brady we call materials like that that they withheld Brady materials so three things today sovereign citizens sometimes win for not for the right reasons but it reinforces their uh, 
their ideas. Number two, uh, prosecutors have to turn over exonerating evidence. If they don't, that's misconduct. And number three, the seminal case on that is Brady v. Maryland. Um, we'll do a quick uh, analysis here of the common senseless meter um, for this guy. I don't have enough information here. Um, to really give him a ranking, uh, but what I'm going to, I'm going to give him, you know, in the common senseless meter, I, I'm, I'm only going to give, I, I don't know, I'm going to give him a five. This guy is neutral, but I will tell you one thing, even if he claimed his sovereign citizenship, he got a good defense attorney. Okay, which is what everybody should do when they're in the situation like that. So his common senseless meter is five. We got a creepiness meter, okay? And um, again, I, I'm not even gonna go into the creepiness meter on this. And the sovereign meter, we're gonna we're gonna give I'm gonna give this gentleman a six, okay? And I think that's a little maybe not high enough. We'll, we'll say six and a half because he maintained his sovereign citizenship throughout, and then it says that he brought it up at the sentencing and tried to withdraw his plea at the sentencing. Da 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 da. So he was going pretty hard with the sovereign citizenship. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something from this video. I'm experimenting with a whole bunch of different formats here. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the meters, uh, the common senseless meter, the sovereign meter, and the creepiness meter. I think I might get rid of the creepiness meter. Um, Post a comment, subscribe, like the video, free way to support the show. Also, sign up for my email list, get a free PDF, Common Sense Academy app.